Jesus is on the cross. He's being crucified between two sinners. An Old Testament sinner and a New Testament sinner. One says, if you are the Christ, come down off of that cross. Others he could save and himself he cannot save. That's the accuser. If you're the Messiah, come down. The other thief on the other side of the cross is suddenly interceding. Because we have two ministries before God. The ministry of accusation and the ministry of intercession. You're either falling into one of two categories in every service. You're either accusing God or his servants or you're interceding for God and his servants. There is no in between. When the spirit of religion and traditions are present in the church and it begins to agitate the prophets, they will expound the mysteries of God because they are being antagonized by eccentric spiritual forces, ancient spirits that are trying to accuse to break down the faith of the prophet that came in to build yours. It's what happened this morning. I was being agitated by the religious belief systems in the atmosphere. And in that, I had to tear down the sophistries of man, tear it down so that we could have this outpouring tonight so that we could begin on the right foot. You understand? So that had to happen. God said, go and occupy. Take the ground. It's my ground. Receive it. You're my son. You're my servant. I'm not afraid to be equated with God, to be the son of God. Joseph, when he was approached by the butler and the baker, he said, look, each of us have had a dream. And, and Joseph said, well, do not interpretations belong to God? And they said, yes. He said, then tell them to me. Wow. Joseph was in prison, in captive, in captivity with fetters around his feet, with irons around his feet. And he still equated himself with God. Tell your dream to me. I'll interpret it. Dream interpretations belong to God. Tell it to me. Because I know him. And I'll ask him. And he'll tell you. See, what we don't understand is that Jesus was in this place where the eyes of non-perception, he's going to cry out in just a moment. But this accusation is, if you are the Christ, come down. And then this other New Testament thief is up on the cross too, and he's like, you and I are both sinners, but this man's done nothing worthy of death. Jesus is crying out, Father, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? He can't see. He can't understand. He can't perceive. Jesus is now separated from the Father for the first time because sin came upon him and sinners can't perceive God. When you're in sin and you're in religion, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't perceive. The only one that can break through is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, look, no man knows the Father except the Son and he to whom the Son wills to reveal the Father. So you can't even know God unless Jesus steps in and says to the Holy Spirit, go and open his eyes. When he was asking his own disciples, who do men say that I am? He was asking the Holy Spirit to open their eyes, to tell him who he was. So he's waiting for the voice of the Father to break through their tradition, through their religion, so that they could speak. That's the New Testament church. The New Testament church should be every person seeing and every person hearing. On the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden it says on, uh, on the day of Pentecost, when Pentecost had fully come, they were all seated together in one accord. Well, that's hard to do, to get everybody on one page. That's really difficult to do. You try getting 120 people to agree on anything. It took them 50 days to do it. In today's vernacular, you would be saying, well, just sit together till you get over your stuff. But what stuff did they have to get over? Who was actually in that room, in the upper room on, on that day of Pentecost? Who was actually in there? What mindsets were in there? Every kind of mindset. Well, I'll tell you what was in there. Here's Peter that said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Eh, wrong. Go to the end of the line, Peter. You're going to do it three times before the cock crows. Thomas said, unless I stick my hand, my fingers in the holes in his hand in the side, I'm not going to believe. So you got unbelief, and you got denial from Peter, and unbelief from Thomas, and then you got James and John who are in competition. Who's going to have the greatest apostolic ministry? And they were in competition. And, and then Jesus turned around and said, what are you guys talking about? Uh, oh, oh no, nothing, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, mama has to step in because there's always a mama in the way. You know what I'm saying? Some, some people got called into ministry by their mama and not by Jesus. 
Oh, come on. You know I'm telling you the truth. How many of you were called into ministry by your mama, but you never heard Jesus say anything? So mama has to get in there and like, Jesus, uh, grant my sons to sit on the, on the right side. Of he said, look, it's not even up to me to give it. It's up to my father to give that position. And so you got James and John, little competition. You got Peter who's in denial. You got Thomas who's in unbelief. And then who else was there? Oh, yeah, Joseph of Arimathea. You always got to have a rich person in the mix. Because the rich person is the one who gets accused by all the poor people of not caring. Well, if they were really, truly saved, they would buy me a car. Oh, come on. Is this getting too close to home? <laughs> and then you got, you got Judas. Judas Iscariot. That's interesting. Judas comes from the root word Judah, which means to praise, and Iscariot means to cut throat. Like Jesus didn't know who he was. He's going to praise, him, praise me to your face, right? But cut his own throat in the end. And then you got, who else did we have in there? Oh, yeah, old Nic Nicodemus, old Nick at night. You remember? Nicodemus got saved at night, right? And then he comes in, he's still wearing all the same robes. So you got some people, I'm sure, that were standing around wondering, is this guy really saved? I mean, why doesn't he take that collar off? Come on. So you had rich people. Oh, here's another one. Mary Magdalene. You know people. Folks were talking about her. Dude, you should have been there, man. Seven demons came out of her. I was there when it happened. Just a few weeks ago, too. Don't say nothing. Here she comes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. And you got all these different mindsets. And Jesus said, go and tarry until you're endued with power from on high. In other words, stay there till you get over yourself. Stay in that one place till you're not looking at each other anymore and all you're doing is looking at me. And if you'll do that, then I'll come. And it said, suddenly, the Lord came to the temple and a rushing mighty wind filled the whole place where they were seated and they all heard it. And then flames of fire. And they all saw it. So the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit wasn't like we teach. The initial outpouring was they all heard and they all saw. Then they began to speak in tongues. And when I say speak in tongues, not squeak in tongues. They began to speak in tongues. They were not ashamed. They were not afraid. It said, how is it that each of us hear in our own language the wonderful works of God? They heard people speaking in tongues. Tongues is a sign to an unbeliever.